So over the past six, seven, eight years, I've started and grown various different Shopify stores to over six figures in profit. And during that time, I've also analyzed hundreds, if not thousands of other Shopify sellers to see exactly what they're doing right so that I'm gonna be able to replicate it with my stores. And in today's video, I wanna go through the top five common things that I've noticed with all of these different stores so that you're gonna be able to pick and choose which one you wanna to apply to your own business to put you on the path of being successful when it comes to starting a drop shipping store as a company complete beginner. So as always, I don't want to waste any more time and I want to get right into it. So if you find any value in this video at any point, don't forget to press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification. Let's get right into it. All right, so jumping straight into one of the first and obvious things that I've noticed with all of the different dropshipping or e-commerce websites that I've analyzed over the years, which is that I'm able to even analyze their website in the first place. And again, I know that this might sound very obvious, but the reason why I felt like it was important for me to start off with this is because a lot of you beginners that are watching this video don't even take the first step for someone to even come across your website for them to even buy something from you most people tend to come up with a lot of excuses when it comes to starting their business and because of that they don't even take the first step and they're never going to put themselves in a position where they're going to be able to change their life with their online business and one of the first things that i always think of as soon as i click into someone else's e-commerce website is that this person actually took the first step to the point where i'm now even able to view their products even though i'm just analyzing their site for research purposes but there's going to be so many other potential customers customers that are going to have the opportunity to buy from them. So just to bring it back to the main point that I'm trying to make, which is that if you are someone that is considering to start a dropshipping store, which I'm sure that you are because you're watching this video, you need to remember that nothing's ever going to happen until you take that first step. And this actually now brings me on to the second common thing that I've noticed with all of the different stores that I've analyzed, which is that of course it's very important to make sure that you take the first step. And it's also important to make sure that you build your store to make it look beautiful and you make sure that it's professional, but it's also important that you make sure that customers are actually going to be able to find it. The mistake that most people make when they first start drop shipping is that they build their store and they expect customers to randomly come across it. When in reality, you need to make sure that you're doing some form of marketing so that you're going to be able to position your store in front of the right customers. This is another thing that I always think about whenever I click into a new store, which is that for me to have been able to find it, they must be doing something right. And if you're currently watching this right now and you're thinking, Sam, which is the best marketing platform that I should use with the products that I'm selling? Well, it all depends on the product that you're selling because there's multiple different options out there when it comes to getting customers to be able to click into your website. For example, you can either use Facebook or you can use Instagram or TikTok or Google Shopping. In my opinion, these are the four main places that I would ideally put my products if I was starting a brand new store today. But when it comes to which one you should choose for your business, again, it depends on the items that you're selling. Now, for me personally, I like to use Google Shopping because customers have to actively go onto Google and type in a specific keyword for my item to be shown to them, which is obviously going to increase my chances of me being able to make a sale. But in saying that, that doesn't necessarily mean that any of these social media platforms are bad. It's just about making sure that you're positioning the products that you're selling in front of a customer that you believe is going to buy it from you. All right, so moving on to the third common thing that I've noticed with majority of the successful Shopify dropshipping stores that I've analyzed, which is that all of them are using some sort of Shopify app when it comes to increasing their conversion rate. And when I say apps, I'm not talking about the ones that you might find on your iPhone or your Android. I'm talking about the ones that you're going to be able to find in the Shopify app store. There's probably hundreds or thousands of different ones that you can choose from when it comes to doing various different things. And of course, you're not going to install all of them. You're going to install the ones that you need that's going to help you with whatever element of your business that you're trying to improve and to give you an example of some of the ones that i use with this particular store that i'm running these are all the ones that i've added and not all of them are active i'll say that maybe 85 maybe 90 percent of them i'm still using till now and all of them do different things like for example this one over here called privy helps me with my email marketing auto ds is used when it comes to automatically fulfilling all of my orders this one over here called order deadline is something i use when it comes to making sure that customers are going to be able to see exactly when they need to place the order by because if they order it in a certain time frame they're going to be able to receive it on a certain day so using an app like this has definitely helped me when it comes to increasing my conversion rate and my revenues and my profits as well as apps like pop which helps me when it comes to getting some sort of social proof because when someone buys an item from my store you're going to be able to see in the corner of my website the last time someone placed an order which means that every single new visitor that comes across my store is going to be able to have a little bit more trust when it comes to buying from me because they
they can see other people buying from me. And just to bring it back to the main point that I'm trying to make, which is that because now that you know that majority of the stores that I've analyzed over the years are using some sort of app and they are successful, it only makes sense for you to kind of plan on which app is going to be best for you and whatever budget you have in mind when it comes to starting your dropshipping business. Because you have to remember that not all of them are going to be free and not all of them are going to be cheap. Some of them may be $100 per month, $50 per month, but they could go as high as $200, $300, depending on how many orders you're getting. But as long as you're aware of the fact that you are going to need to invest in apps to grow and scale your business, you're going to be able to set aside a budget for them. Okay, so moving on to one of the next things that you guys definitely need to make sure that you're doing with your stores is to make sure that you're putting the correct policy pages clearly stated on your website. And for those of you that don't really understand what I mean when I say policy pages, this is things like shipping policy, refund policy, terms and conditions. This is something that I've noticed that so many successful drop shipping stores do. Because you have to remember that as soon as a customer clicks in to your website, they don't know nothing about your brand, they don't know nothing about you as a company. So you need to make sure that you're giving them all the necessary information they need for them to trust you enough to give you their credit card details. And this isn't something that you should only do when it comes to you getting customers to trust you but you should also do it when it comes to you getting approved for whatever ad platform that you're looking to use whether you're looking to use TikTok, facebook instagram or google your chances of getting accepted to start running campaigns is going to be increased if you do have all of these different policy pages on your website and for those of you that are completely confused on exactly what i'm talking about and you want to see an example of it if we just go over to auto ds so i'm just going to click into it they got this useful feature over here called marketplace where you're going to be able to scroll through and see all of these different items that are currently selling well. But not only that, you're also gonna be able to click into any one of these different products that you're considering to sell. So let's say if you did wanna sell this one over here, AutoDS is gonna be able to show you a seller that's currently selling it. So I'm just gonna click into this link over here. And to give you an example of what I mean when I say policy pages, if I just scroll down to the bottom, as you can see, this store has a link to their payment policy, their delivery and shipping policy, privacy policy, terms and conditions, refund policy. This is something that you need to make sure that you're aware of and it's something that you need to make sure that you implement to your own dropshipping business if you want to be able to increase your chances of success. All right, so moving on to one of the final things that I want to leave you guys with if you are a complete beginner that's looking to get your dropshipping business off the ground, which is that you need to make sure that you're keeping up with the latest trends. Now, one thing that I try and do with all of my online businesses, e-commerce businesses, anything that I'm doing is I like to make sure that I'm keeping up with all of the latest changes that are happening with that particular market. Reason being is because if you're not really making changes to your business that you should do in terms of all of the changes that are happening, you're going to be left behind. And this is something that we've seen happen over and over again to big, big businesses over the past few years. For example, Blockbuster and Netflix, or MySpace and Facebook, or BlackBerry and Apple. There's so many different examples of companies that didn't really keep up with the latest trends, and because of that, they got left behind. Now, specifically when it comes to doing dropshipping, some of the latest trends that I've personally noticed is big companies are starting to use AI bots to help them with various different elements of the day-to-day -day runnings of their company. Another recent trend that's happening right now is the global recession and the fact that consumers are spending less money. And because of that, so many different dropshippers are doing various different tactics for them to be able to continuously keep bringing in revenue. There's so many different trends that you need to be aware of, and I'm not going to be able to go through all of them because if I do, this video is going to end up being 30 minutes, maybe one hour long. But I recently released a video where I went through the top five trends that you need to know in 2023 and beyond. Make sure you check that out by clicking the link right there. It's already helped out so many people and i'm sure that it's going to help you out too all right guys i'll see you on the next one make sure you stay safe out there peace